Hey guys, and welcome back to Rodea the Sky Soldier. Richie, I'm kind of all tapped out in talking about stuff other than the game, so uh, is there plot in this part? Yes, there is plot. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh. <laughs> and it's actually plot that's going to begin to tie a lot of stuff together. Mm, a lot of loose plot threads. Yes, and it's going to build us towards a conclusion, essentially. Cool. That thing in the background, that's a launching ramp, if ever I've seen one. Yeah, <laughs> you can probably tell what you need to use to get across it. Uh, the visor? S the speed shoes. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> but I mean, this is a nifty sort of idea, because in order to progress you need the slide, well, the speed shoes or the slide gear or whatever the hell it's called, but to get that you need to go up before you can progress. Ah, the bait and switch, it's like the way ahead is right in front of you, but to get it you've got to go up and over. Exactly. There's like a few games that do that, like you see the exit right in front of you, but nope, here's a, here's a side path. I mean, there's a few examples I can think of, for like the, just the bait and switch. Super Mario 3D World did at least one of those where you had to chase after the flagpole. Oh yeah, that was, that was pretty funny actually. That, that was a great moment. Also, Crisis City in Generations in the classic version. Yes, that's brilliant. That's one of the best troll moments ever. Oh god, definitely. Well, how do you feel about uh, the... Well, I, I guess it's going to be uh, the announcement for the, uh, you know, the 25th anniversary game coming at a... You know, that thing that's happening in July. Sorry to be so vague, I had trouble getting my words out there. <laughs> I I'm very excited. I hope it's everything we all want. But I, I will remain slightly hesitant until such time as Sega and Sonic Team can prove that they can be competent again. Fair dues, mate, fair dues. Because they always say, we'll try harder for the fans next time, but you've had, like, ten years, you know? And even, like, if you were fair on the games, like, oh, I like this, but it has problems, they, they still have a long way to go. Yeah. I mean, if we get something akin to a Generations 2, I will be quite content. Put ice cap in it, you fox! <laughs> sorry, sorry, got a little bit triggered there. I mean, I would be definitely down with that, because... I'm surprised that they didn't include Ice Cap in the game, considering it, they desperately needed an ice level of some description. Yeah, yeah, it was all like greenery and cities, but uh, that's kind of what Mon Sonic is known for, I guess. Uh, I should say, when we're talking about Ice Cap, we mean Ice Cap Zone from Sonic 3 and K, not Ice Cap from Sonic Adventure, although why get those two confused beyond me? Well, I mean, to be fair, even if you had Ice Cap from Sonic Adventure 1, it, there could be worse things. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, who wouldn't want to be snowboarding down a mountain again? That'd be cool, be wild, be groovy. I mean, at the end of the day, isn't Ice Cap a reference or homage to Ice Cap Zone anyway? So. Pretty much. Oh, that just takes me back to, uh, I'm getting a little bit triggered now, in the Game Grunts run of Sonic Adventure DX, which I gave up after about, like, 15 parts, honestly. You know, riffing it just, like, stopped being funny after a while. But they get to, you know, the snowboarding bit, and Aaron's like, oh, what's with all this, like, different stuff happening? You know, Sonic doesn't snowboard. And I'm like, um, first of all, excuse me, second of all, Ice Cap Zone. Go fuck yourself. I wonder how you would enjoy the Runaway Guys' Sonic Adventure playthrough. <laughs> uh, is that a challenge? Uh, maybe, I don't know, because, I mean, they clearly enjoyed themselves in the game. Uh -huh. They were certainly rather um, derpy at points, but there was a particular charm to it. They just spent a little bit too much time at certain moments taking the piss, mostly with Big. Mm -hmm. Well, to be fair, I don't mind derpy moments, you know, in LPs, so long as there's like a shred of humility shown, you know? That's what separates frustrating bad gameplay from funny bad gameplay. Exactly, yes. So I'm waiting for that plot, uh, we're roughly about five minutes in and it hasn't shown its ugly head yet. Uh, so the plot is right at the end of the chapter, right around the time that we have a meeting with one of the R unit series is so we, we've we've got quite a, a bit of time to kill. Okay, uh, any other topics we could uh, talk about? Uh, 
how about this floating up a, th a thingy, Majiggy? Oh, Richie, Richie, you're not very good with the off-topic commentary, <laughs> are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it, it begins to become a struggle when it's just like, right, I have uh, run out of meaningful culture trivia. Uh -huh. There is practically nothing in terms of information about this game outside of its prolonged and tortuous development period. Uh-huh. And, yeah, you just go like, oh. Yeah, yeah. It's fair enough, it's fair enough. Um, you know, it's funny, like, two or three years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do, like, off-topic stuff much at all, because, like, I was, like, so badly depressed then, and, like, I was, like, at my most, like, anal retentive and OCD. If we went off-topic for too long, I would have just asked for a retake, and uh, that's kind of why that you know, relationship with, like, Sonic stuff sort of fell apart, but uh, we're still going to do, like, Sonic stuff, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you've you got Flame, you've got me, you've got Donny, and there, there are plenty of us. Yeah. It, it is part of the, the, the HFC family that likes Sonic enough to want to commentate over him. Yeah, and hey, you show up when I ask you to show up, so that's a plus already. <laughs> shade, motherfucker, shade. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh. I just love ice environments, you know, they're so peaceful. Well, exactly, yes. Um, they get a little less peaceful when you know there's blizzards everywhere, but... Ah, uh, you know, it calls for the territory. Exactly. Also, we, we, we are slowly but surely getting to the point where plot is. Um, if you've spotted the giant floating island that the camera keeps panning to, that is our destination for plot. You mean the one that specifically looks like an arena? Yes. You play video games for a long time and you get to see, like, certain set pieces over and over. <laughs> Definitely. And considering Rodea is very much a video gamer's game, it plays a lot of those video gamey tropes. What does that mean exactly? Because you're very much coming off like a hardcore gamer there. Well, by that I mean... If you play a lot of video games, you do recognise those tropes of there is a massive arena, there's probably going to be a boss fight in it of some description. Or, you know, you get like an item fountain or whatever the term is just before a boss. Exactly. So you come to expect those tropes and they are associated with video games. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. And this game is very much in love with that very specific era of video games, so it d decides to make most of those tropes. Oh, the popping man, I'm seeing it and it's real. Yeah, but at least this has got the excuse of being on the Wii. And... Looking at you, Wii U! <laughs> oh, speaking of, uh, like, it's kind of breaking news, as of, like, March 22nd, when we're recording this part, uh, the Wii U is officially being discontinued this year. Well, that was the rumour, anyway. It's probably true. Um, part of me hopes it kind of isn't, because I would like at least a little bit longer of the Wii U, but we know the NX is coming at some point. Very, very, very soon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, probably to be expected, but as long as I get at least over 20 games from a Wii U, I'll be happy. I think I'm going to hit that. Give me your top five Wii U games. Uh... Wonderful 101, Bayonet 2. Uh huh. Uh. See, you're struggling. You're struggling no, already. No, it's because I'm trying to think through what Wii U games I've got. Okay. So give me one second. I'm going <laughs> on my backloggery. Oh, you're, ac you're actually going on your backloggery. Okay, yes. sorry. Uh, Mario Kart 8. Oh, fuck yes. Best Mario Kart, hands down, I've got oh, to say. It, it's amazing. You know, um, I, I begrudgingly take that title from Double Dash, which was my favourite, but apart from like some like jaggedness and, um, <coughs> you know, um, the battle mode being all kerfuffled, Mario Kart 8 is just a stellar product. I wanted more DLC. Like, I wanted a third pack at the very least. Oh, definitely. Um, I would probably also put uh, Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD on a sort of shared platform. I don't know if I'd put them in any list, because they're just a stopgap for Zelda U. True. I mean, th there are a lot of games that like, I mean, Ta Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is adorable. I still want to play that. It should be cheap by now. 
and maybe not quite so cheap as you know Nintendo game. But then again, Bayonetta 2 was being sold dirt cheap, so maybe. Well, that's a platinum game. Yeah, um, Lego City Undercover was actually surprisingly excellent. I hear that's sort of underrated. Not like in an old game of the generation sort of way, but yeah. I would say reasonably, yeah. Um, Pikmin 3, which was excellent. Uh, after watching Ted play that for us in the Nintendo phone, I've had zero desire to go back and play the copy that I got for free. <laughs> well, maybe one day you'll have a try, and then... I mean, Super Mario 3D World is surprisingly charming. I, I, I would like to include the likes of like Yoshi's Woolly World in there, but that was alright. I would like to include Smash Bros for Wii U, because there's a lot of content in there, it's just... it's not exactly the most fun single-player game to play for prolonged periods of time. No, no. And Splatoon is a mixed bag in that respect as well. Well, I know, like, a certain person who would fight you in regards to that opinion, but, uh, uh, you know, understandable, understandable. Is that your top five? Uh, well, I mean, that was probably more than a top five, but so at least most of those games on that list would fall into my top five Wii U games. Okay, for me, it's, um, Splatoon... Uh, let me just look. It's like, certainly not Lost World or Sonic Boom. I'll give you that for free. Oh yeah, L Lost World's on my list of Wii games that I've o that I own and that I've beaten. But yeah, that's not going anywhere near a top of list. Okay, I'll give you my top three just because we're kind of blabbering here. Um, Mario Kart 8, Splatoon, Super Mario Maker. Yeah, that sounds like a reasonable list. Uh -huh. Keep in mind, I have not played uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X yet. It's still in its wrapping. I've been too busy with comms. I've said, I'm quite intrigued as to see where the Wii U, at least what the games that are coming out on the Wii U in the next few months are going to go, because obviously we've got Star Fox Zero, which could go either way. Yeah, we as we discussed earlier in the playthrough, that kind of did a 180, at least for me. Well, it's it certainly done a 180 in terms of public perception. Whether it will re return 180 as soon as we actually get the game is a different matter, but there is hope at the minute. Um, you also have... The massive question mark over um, Color Splash. Uh. We'll see. Um, you've got Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE, which could turn out to be a surprisingly good RPG. And you've got Zelda Wii U. I'm so hyped for Zelda U, you've got no idea. I just need some more media. But anyway, we are once again blathering, so who is this? This is another of the R Unit series. This is Kelvis. Ha! I get it. <laughs> it's to do with temperature. Yes. Also, that ship should look somewhat familiar to you. Oh, shit. D d do you remember where that is from? Ah, uh, yes, from the start of the game? Yes. Is it the princess's ship? Yes. Oh, shit. We in time travel shenanigans mode now, boys. <laughs> but before we get any more memories of any sort, we've got to take down Kelvis. i got to say, and I'm using that phrase a lot, I think I got it from you, but uh, I love the fact that we're fighting, like, related bosses, because that just makes the fights as easy as they are, just that little bit more personal. Oh, definitely. And also there is a sense of ramping up between them because Orthos is a little bit wimpy, but somewhat mysterious because we don't know who he is because Rodea doesn't know what the hell is going on. Uh -huh. So that's not quite as grandiose or epic. Then you get up to Rylus, who kidnaps Ion, and then there's the, the tension there. Uh -huh. But then you get to Kelvis, and the tension rises to because Rodea is beginning to remember who he is. Yeah, and she's like very clearly antagonistic. In a way that like Rylus wasn't. He was like all brute strength and whatnot. She's a little bit more cunning. Yes. And also just surprisingly mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> passive aggressive. Yeah. You must have a heart Although there's this really odd thread that they carry through with her character of when she first booted up, she stepped in something. Ah, oh, okay. That's... weird. Yeah. It, 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 it's a joke that really doesn't pay off. Yeah, another Yuji Naka attempt at humour, I think. Yeah, but I like that they... I, I like what they did with it, but the attempt at the joke does just fall flat entirely. I love her design. Like, the white and gold with a little bit of black in there. It's really cool. <laughs> 
and it makes her fit in quite nicely with the ice theme that we've got going for this level. Yeah, they could have very easily gone with blue, but uh, that's a little bit cliche, I think. Mm-hmm. But here we go, Rodea has begun to remember things. Is she dead? Uh, no, she she's not dead. Okay, because stuff fell, and then there was like a POV shot of something falling onto her. Yeah, you'd think that she was dead, but no. I think the game wants you to think that she's dead. Okay, I'm going to throw something out here, sorry to interrupt you. Is Ion Cecilia's descendant? Uh, mm, you don't have to say it outright. I'll take those sounds as confirmation that, as always, I am right. I wouldn't necessarily say right. You're, I think you're in the right ballpark of what the game is suggesting. Okay. But descendant is not probably quite accurate. Reincarnation. You're right. That is that is my well. The, the <laughs> reincarnation is certainly my interpretation of the situation. This is a nice and peaceful scene to end on. Oh, definitely. Bit depressing. But... Yeah, well, you know, depressing stuff can be calming. Just look at Hellfire comes. And on that note, we'll see you next time for another part of Rotate in the Sky, Soldier. Bye for now. <laughs>